Hi, welcome to Pico Playtime, a video series where I play through some cool Pico 8 games to show to you lovely people. Today's game is called Trial of the Sorcerer and it's by a developer called Mott, also known as Tom Mulgrew. Uh, let's get it loaded up. So, Trial of the Sorcerer, it is a first person shooter, very similar to Wolfenstein, the same kind of idea as Wolfenstein, if you can think of that. Let's read the description before we get started. So, grab your magic staff and venture deep into the demon realm to defeat Barmot and his evil servants. Trial of the Sorcerer is a procedurally generated 3D first person shooter inspired by Wolfenstein 3D and Catacomb Abyss. Shoot monsters, collect loot, find keys to unlock doors and try to find the exit to the next level. And don't forget to pick up the power crystals to level up your magic staff along the way. So yeah, it's kind of like if Heretic was made in the Wolfenstein 3D engine. There you go, that's the pitch. So, the um, game uses the mouse. You can, well, you can control the game with kind of um, mouse control, mouse, what do you got, mouse look. It's not what's sad, it's Pico 8's version of that. I'll get into it. Um, there's an editor, haven't had a look at that yet, because um, for a change, I'm actually reviewing a brand new game. This game was released today. So this is all very new. I haven't tried the editor yet. Um, I'm going to make a new game to show you some things from the beginning. We've got the main quest, which is what I'll show you. And again, I haven't actually tried the random quest. So maybe maybe I'll try that at the end. We'll see how far I get. Anyway, on to the main quest. Yes, I want to quit my current game. Nice little transition there. I like it. So... This game has quite a nice little intro, so I'll let that play whilst I have a swig of my energy drink, which I've got this week. It's a kind of bulldog power energy drink. Orange. It's orange flavour. It contains BCAAs, reduced sugar, and British spirit. Now, sadly, that did not mean it contained gin, because that might be okay. Or even whiskey, that's technically a British spirit. Um, none of that. I think it's talking about the Dunkirk spirit which sadly doesn't really help energy drinks. Um, this is a nice little cutscene that I'm talking over, isn't it? There isn't much sound in this game, sadly. Um, it'd be nice, or music for that matter. It'd be nice if there was, but the gameplay is why we are here. And also, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> That's slightly terrifying. Is that Barmot then? He's a creepy guy, isn't he? This is a lovely little animation. So this shows you some of the enemies in the game. We've got skeletons, we've got goblins, we've got those red things. I think they're dragons. Um, they're a massive, massive pain in the neck. I'm not sure if I'm able to get to see to show you those in the time we have available. We can try though. So this game then, the controls that it uses, Pico Eight. The standard P weight controls are the arrow keys and Z and X on the keyboard or on a, on a controller for that matter. Um, if you want to use a controller for this game, you can. I tried playing it to start with and yeah, you can get through the first few levels, but you do get to a point where you need to circle strafe and that's when you need to use the mouse and keyboard. So for the movement keys on the keyboard, it's using the player two controls. The Pico 8 actually has two players supported. I think you can go up to four players actually. But it's using the player two controls for movement and then you can use your mouse for looking and shooting. Here we are on the first level. So these levels are procedurally generated. So let's um let's get into it, shall we? So as you can see, very much like a Wolfenstein 3D style game. It's all on one plane, but we do have some nice texture mapping, which is cool. And we have weapons. Now, one of the interesting parts of this game, which I like, your weapons don't have any ammunition. You just you can fire them as much as you want, which is good because the game is quite... In, oh, my God. The game is in places quite hard. If you are also having to worry about um, ammunition, I think that would spoil it. And also... We're a magician. We are a sorcerer. It is our trial. I don't think, you know, we're going to be, as sorcerers, going to be worried about running out of ammunition. So I'm glad that that's in. We can pick up um, coins for gold, 
I think that's just like a score, I think. Um, you could probably figure out that the heart is for health. You can see that at the top. Those will become much more scarce later on. Um, there's a good enemy. That's the skeleton. Now, as you progress through the game, your weapon gets upgraded. Oh, there's some bats. And um, this first kind of weapon, it's kind of like the pistol, I suppose. Um, we'll get an upgrade. In fact, here we are at the exit. We'll get an upgrade, which kind of makes it more like a shotgun. And as far as I've managed to get before I got stuck, um, I got a kind of flamethrower kind of wand, kind of like the chain gun. So, you know, you've got a weapon progression, kind of similar to Doom, which is cool. Um, it's just a little bit sad that you can't um, switch weapons, um, especially when you get the flamethrower. The flamethrower weapon staff isn't really very good at long range. It can make it quite tricky. Now, often when I say that you can't do things in a game, I later find out, oh, no, actually you can. There's just some button combination you didn't try. As far as I'm aware, you can't change it. I'm checking now on the description just to make sure that I'm not talking rubbish here. I think that's it. So let's carry on then. So the first couple of levels are um, in these graveyards. We're in an overgrown graveyard now. And yeah, I'm not... I assume that the layouts... Hey, there's our upgrade. Oh, and we just got hit by a skeleton. So you can see this next weapon, you can see it's kind of firing a spread shot. So that's kind of like our shotgun, isn't it? Good weapon, this. Much better than the blue staff. And there we are getting attacked by evil dogs. We all know them. So yeah. We explore the levels. The way the keys work is kind of interesting. At the moment, you can see I've got keys one, three, and four. Um, specific keys are needed for specific doors. It's not like in like in Zelda where a key is just a key and it opens anything. And it's different, I suppose, to Doom, where you know you have colored keys. And um, some of the levels, I think the most keys I've seen on one level was five. So, lots of things to pick up. Doors that don't have a lock, they just open up. Nice little touch of the door slide. <laughs> I just like little things like that. So, as we um, progress through the game, let's see if we can um, get to the next level. As you progress through the game, we go deeper into um, Barmot's realm. We start off in these kind of um, fairly well-lit graveyards. It starts to get darker, and eventually we descend into some dungeony cave type locales so yeah this game is much much easier with mouse look on and um, i struggled a lot more on this first these first few levels when i was just using the gamepad use mouse look right then here we go so this is our first change of terrain a desolate mausoleum i think these levels are um kind of randomized the um item placement certainly feels randomized very clever how that works. I haven't actually had a peek at the code yet. I don't think I'd understand much of it. Um, I have immense respect for anyone who can coax 3D out of Pico 8 because it does it doesn't make it easy for you. As you can see, we've got there we go. We've got key five. So there's at least five keys on this level. So graphics. I really like the. Graphics, the um, sprite work, very evocative of games like, um, well, Wolfenstein. I haven't actually ever played Catacomb Abyss, but I can imagine that it's kind of a one of these you know, pseudo 3D dungeon crawlers. I had the Beholder, all those kinds of games. Yeah, the graphics really fit into that style. They're nice and colourful, as always on Pico 8. I don't think this game's actually using the extended palette, which is interesting. Certainly on this level, this looks like the regular Pico 8 palette. So that's interesting, because the last 3D game that I did a video on in Pico 8 was Poom, which used... That used all the colours. 
Now, one problem of 3D in Pico 8 is the resolution. Even items that are even, I mean, that heart is literally at the other side of that room and it gets very difficult to see. So if you're expecting a crisp 3D experience here, you're not going to get it because this is Pico 8. Ah, so we have, we need a new key. So now we wander around looking for some more keys. I don't think we've had any new enemies on this yet. The, um, the most interesting enemies, I think, are the spiders. They seem to do lots of, I think they're meant to be like spider wizards. They seem to be able to do a lot of things, not just any old spider. They can cast green fireball things. They can summon little spiders. Um, they have a few attacks. There are quite a few enemies in the game. Most of them have fairly similar behavior, but as we get further in, we do start to see some um, trickier enemies. The um, There's ghosts that we will hopefully be able to see that they um, fire fast-moving kind of shockwave kind of attacks. Oh, we're back at the beginning. And I don't think I'll get this far, but the dragons, the red monster things from the intro, yet yeah, they're an absolute nightmare. Really difficult to fight, especially with the flamethrower, because... If we get to it, it has a bit of a bit of a spread on that weapon. Not very good at range. Also, all these weapons are all hit scan. And the flamethrower is not. Right, I think we're going the right way. So there's a little cheeky little goblin. And yep, must be a spider in there. There he is. Oh, perhaps it's a she. I don't know. Either way, we um, want rid of that spider pretty quick before it starts... Casting spells or doing anything else. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that there aren't, there isn't any music in the game. It would, I think, it would add to the atmosphere a lot. The um, kind of murky atmosphere of these dungeons. The sound, other than that, is quite good. Um, simple, but it, especially when you've got a lot going on, I think simple and short sounds are probably a good thing. Otherwise, it would turn into a bit of a cacophony the um, different enemies have different kind of attack sounds so especially the ghosts they have a particularly um, memorable sound that they make so if you hear that it's time to get out of the way time to dodge right let's see if we can get off this level because I want to show you if I can the dragons so I think the main quest I think the idea is that each that the order of the levels is kind of fixed. I'm guessing that the random level, the random quest, I think that might just make a random level and just a one-off. Oh, okay. I'm going completely the wrong way here, aren't I? Now, when you do get lost, you can always just resort to the old turn left at every corner solution. That seems to work. I'm guessing that's how the procedural generation works. Um, you don't seem to get any areas where you get kind of crossovers. Or kind of, um, you know, loops in the path. That's the right way. I have no idea where I am. I'm talking and trying to play. It's never a good, <laughs> never a good mix for me. Oh, where do we need to go? I've got one key left, so I'm probably just looking for the one door now. Is this it? Okay, well, something hit us. Oh, skeleton, there we go. Yeah, so you can see there, skeleton, some... Oh, sorry, the spider. Some of some little buddies. Thankfully, we are able to deal with that. Okay, then. Level complete. Let's have some more bulldog power. See if that British spirit is going to help me progress. It may do. A desolate mausoleum. I think this might be the first level where we meet ghosts. We'll see. And then I think the next level is, or the level after that, presumably, when we actually get into the cave. I think that's where we're going to first meet the dragons. What's hitting me? Something. Yeah. Enemies are very good at sneaking up on you in this game, because they don't, they don't have any kind of sounds when they are alerted. They will just happily sneak up behind you and start doing lots of damage. Even the weak enemies like the bats can really ruin your day. 
Yeah, I do like the um, I do like this green staff. I think of the weapons, this is my favourite. Now there's an upgrade, so I guess we have to be um, saying goodbye to the green staff and saying hello to the flamethrower. It is, it does look really cool, and against the less dangerous enemies, it is really good. I just struggle with it against the um, the dragons. Then again, that might just be the level that I have. Um, you can see rooms often have these um, bits of decoration in. This room's got these statues in the center. They block movement, and I think they also block these fireball shots. So, yeah, that's bad when that happens. And that was a pretty poor fight. I'm nearly dead. If you die, you get respawned at the start of the level. Um, now, here is a problem that I encountered. Um, if you complete a level with very low health and then die in the next level, when you respawn or when you restart the level, you start with the same amount of health. Um, that's how I got stuck, basically. I got to the end of a tricky level, managed to defeat a couple of dragons, start the next level with two health, and, yeah, couldn't find any other health. Didn't get very far. So that's a little bit of a shame. I think it'd be a, lot, a little bit more fair if you did restart levels with full health. It certainly helped getting through things. Because despite the procedural generation and such, this isn't a roguelike. Let's not start saying everything's a roguelike. Oh, oh no. Oh, there we go. Lovely little death animation though. Or... See, there is some music, just not a lot. Right, I'm going to give this level another go. See if I can complete it. Quite a big level, this. Yeah, I think I need to just probably be a little bit more cautious. Although that doesn't really make for the most engaging viewing, does it? You just have... I just... What is hitting me there? Something was hitting me. I don't know what. Did a lot of damage, though. Yeah, those spiders. <laughs> they, they are the most dangerous enemies, I think. Got loads of keys. Let's see, can I... Um... This is the room where I got the next weapon upgrade, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I do wish you could switch weapons. I think, especially if you could switch between the green and the yellow staffs, that would make things a lot easier, I think. But anyway, this is such a fun little game. Oh, so many spiders! Right, I am... Been far too careless going into this room. I don't think there's actually anything in this room either. No, it's just an empty room. It's just a room with some enemies in. I could have just left that room. Oh well. Now, there are a lot of, you may have noticed, There are some rather suspicious looking marks on walls. I assume that there are secrets in this game. Um, these kind of Wolfenstein games, you know, retro FPSs, they've always got secrets, haven't they? Hidden walls, that kind of thing. I haven't found anything yet, but I would not be surprised if there were some of you lurking. Right, I need to find some locked doors because I've still got loads of keys here. Right, we're at the beginning. We got to this point last time, didn't we? Can't remember where we needed to go though. I think we have been. I think we did go a different route this time. I can't remember having the upgraded staff so early. Yeah, big rooms like this with lots of enemies in, especially. You can see the problem now of the flat fire staff. There's a bat right in front of me. And I, it's at the other end of the room and I cannot hit it. It's too far away. Because this, this staff is just so inaccurate. So yeah, it would be nice if you could switch weapons. I've said that a few too many times, I think. 
Right, one key left. But where do we need to go? There's a locked door. Is this the one? Is this the room where we died last time? I feel like it may have been. There's so many enemies. Oh, those spiders. Right, one more hit and I'm dead. Oh no. <laughs> oh, this is dense. I can't. I need to get out of this corridor. It's so dangerous them spiders. Oh, something else is in here with me. There's a goblin over there. Right, did we do it? Is that the last room? It was! Phew. Right then, what's the next level? Let's see. Haunted Graveyard. I think this is where we start to see ghosts. But anyway, that's 20 minutes. I could keep playing this game, but who'd want to watch that? You should go and play this game though. As usual, I put a link down below for the game on Itch. I'm playing it on Splore. If you want to look for the game on Splore, and the developers called himself Mott on Splore on Pico 8. Tom Mulgrew on Itch though. Check out some of Tom's other games. I'm just going to have a quick check of his um, Itch page. Because I'm sure there's a few games that I've seen. Oh there you go. 8 Ball Pool. So there's a pool game on Pico 8. That's, that's the same guy. So yeah maybe I should have a look at that. Anyway I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the game this one's fresh this you need to get this um whilst it's still fresh <laughs> it's a lot of fun um there are more and more kind of 3d shooters 3d games appear on peak away um i think that's probably just because pe people are generally getting a lot better at developing for the console now there's new commands that come out of every um, update that make these things a little bit easier. We just seen a ghost there. That was one of the ghost enemies whilst I was talking. So yeah, it's nice to see games like this on people like this kind of game is a lot of fun. Really fits in with um Pico 8 kind of style. And yeah, I highly recommend it. Oh, am I gonna get wiped out again? Maybe. Oh, oh those spiders. Yeah, not a game to play if you're afraid of spiders because they um I think they're probably the one of the trickiest enemies in the game. You can see on this level as well, things are starting to get a little darker. We've got a little bit of a kind of I can't remember what the technical term for it is, but the the darkness fog effect like you get on Doom. So yeah. Very impressive from a technical standpoint this. Way above why I can achieve in Pico 8, so my hat is tipped to you, Tom Mugru. I died. Prep this game out. It's fun. I've already done the outro, then I carried on playing. So this is going to be like another outro. Let's finish off my kind of bulldog power. Mm. So much good for spirit. Right. Cheers for watching. Go and check out this game. And yeah, I'll see you again very soon. See you later.